Let's solve some electromagnetism GCSC physics questions. These are questions from OCR, however they're applicable to AQA and Edexcel and International GCSEs and all of the exam boards. So our first question, we have a magnetic field diagram and what we need to do is see how to label the individual poles. What are the poles P and Q? Well, the field lines always go from north to south. So this means that Q will be north and P will be south. Correct answer is C. Okay, next one. A current is passed through a straight wire. Which diagram shows the magnetic field around the current carrying wire? So first of all, the field will be circular. And this means that we can immediately discount C and D that have this strange sort of rectangular field. So is it going to be A or B? You can use the right hand rule. So in order to do so, what you need to do is you need to take your right hand and place the thumb in the direction of the current. So this here is the thumb. And then your fingers are going to grip in the direction of, so this here is the thumb and this here are your fingers. And notice that the curl of the fingers is pointing in the direction of the current. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Next one, a student investigates the magnetic field or the magnetic effect of a current in a solenoid with a core. So they make four different solenoids. Which one of them will have the strongest magnetic field? So the higher the number of turns, the greater the effect of the solenoid, the greater the induced EMF. So the highest number is 20. So it's either going to be C or D. Now we want to be, when we, when we have a solenoid, we're going to have a core such as this one with one end here and then the other one here. The core actually links the magnetic field like this. We can even place another element of the core up here. So the magnetic field goes around here. So in order for this to happen, this material here needs to be magnetic. And uh, copper is not magnetic, but iron is magnetic. And typically we use soft iron for the core. So the correct answer is D. Next one, a transformer has 100 turns the primary coil, 200 turns in the secondary coil. The potential difference across the primary coil is 30 volts. Now, first of all, this is a step up transformer because it has 100 turns in the primary and 200 turns in the secondary. So the step up ratio is two, meaning that the voltage will increase by a factor of two. So, well, two times 30 is just 60 volts. Therefore, correct answer is C. Okay, let's do a longer written question. A student places a wire near a magnet. The wire is connected in series as shown. Explain what will happen to the wire when the switch is closed. So we know that there's going to be current that runs through the switch, but the current that runs will create its own magnetic field. So we can say that the current in the wire will create a magnetic field. Because the wire will have magnetic field, which will be circular like this, almost like a coil, but it will be circles, not actually spirals. Uh, let me just draw this properly for your understanding. You don't have to uh, draw this, but it will kind of look like this. Then the, the magnetic field of the wire will interact with the magnetic field in the magnet. So because of that, we can say that the magnet will exert a force on the wire or vice versa. So let's just write that the magnet will exert a force on the wire. Okay, next one. A wire of length 0.25 meters experiences a force of 0.15 when a current of 5 amp flows. We're looking for the magnetic flux density, which is just B. So we're going to use the F is equal to Bill equation. So F is equal to Bill. And what I'm going to do is just rearrange that for the flux density, which is just B. So this will just be equal to the force divided by the current times uh, the length. So our force is 0.15 
Let's divide that by the current, which is 5.0 amps, multiply by the length, which is 0.25, and plugging that into a calculator, we are going to get 0.12 Tesla. Okay, next one about the motors and generators. We have a motor and a generator. Compare the similarities and differences of a motor and a generator. Include ideas about how they work. So here's my answer. First of all, they both involve rotation. We have a coil which is rotating in both cases, and that coil is being surrounded by some magnets. Now, in the motor, though, electrical energy is transferred to the kinetic energy store. In the generator, kinetic energy is transferred to the electrical energy store. Just to expand a little bit more on that, because it's actually interesting, in the case of the electrical um, energy, we have some current which is, or in the case of the motor, we have some electrical current which is running through this coil. However, in the presence of a magnetic field, there's going to be a force on the wire and this will make this rotate. In the case of a generator, it's the opposite. Something else will be moving the coil. So typically something like steam or um or perhaps uh, something like water, which is going to be pushing the coil sort of upwards, making it rotate. And then as it's rotating, there's going to be an induced EMF, which will make some current run for this circuit. Then we have another one. How does the output current of an alternator different from that of a dynamo? And something good to remember is that the alternator outputs AC, whereas the dynamo outputs DC. Here's an interesting one. So we have a student's project across here that we actually need to correct. So what we need to do is to identify one of the incorrect words and write a correct sentence to replace the mistake. Now, let's read for this. A sound wave is a pressure wave. Sound waves uh, cause areas of high and low pressure, which is fine. As the diaphragm moves in and out, so does the coil. The coil is surrounded by a magnet. A resistance is induced across the ends of the wire. Now, I'm just going to correct them here, but um, the incorrect word is resistance. So we can't really induce resistance, but we can induce voltage or potential difference. So I'm just going to change that to PD. Now, additionally, the if we keep on reading, it says a microphone is similar to a motor. Well, that is not true because what a microphone does is it takes in essentially kinetic energy, the energy of sound, the energy, that pressure wave energy, and it converts that to an electrical signal. So it's much more similar to a generator. So our incorrect word is a motor, which we can uh, replace with a generator. We could also have written resistance here for the incorrect word. If we've done that, we would have written potential difference of voltage. Okay, name a device which uses this effect in reverse. Well, this here is a speaker that we can just write. Okay, question seven, let's practice the left hand rule. So a wire is placed inside this magnet, which direction will the wire move when the switch is closed? Now, first of all, this here is the bigger terminal and this here is the smaller terminal. So this means this is positive to negative and current flows positive to negative. So the current will be going through here. Now, the magnetic field lines will flow from north to south and they will look like this horizontal. And we need to apply the left hand rule. Now, if we apply the left hand rule correctly, which is a little bit tricky to show in this setting, we're going to get that the answer is A downwards. I've got a special video dedicated to the left hand rule. And if you're confused on this, please check this out. I'll leave a video in the, the description of this one. Okay, next one, which is about transformers. What output voltage does a transformer produce? So our primary has 50 turns. The other one has 250 turns, which means that the voltage here will be 5 times bigger because 250 over 50 is just equal to 5. So if we have 2 volts on this side, this means we're going to have 5 times as many. So we're going to have 
10 volts because 2 times 5 is 10. Correct answer is D. Okay, another one. A student sets up an experiment to investigate the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. Describe how the student could use this experiment and a compass to investigate the magnetic field produced by the wire. Now, this is typically one of the required practicals. So, um, this is typically done for a permanent magnet. However, we could also do that for um, an electromagnet. The first thing that uh, we need to do is we need to place the compass onto the card. So that's what I'm going to write down. Place compass on the card. What we tend to do then is we need to plot the direction of the needle. So we plot the direction of the needle. And the way I typically do this when I do this experiment, say that I have this compass and then the north is pointing this way, then I just place a little dot here. Then I'm going to move the compass so that the back of the needle is placed like so and uh, then I'm going to plot this again. So I'm continuously moving tip to tail. So I'm going to say that we're going to be repeating, repeat plotting the field from the tip, uh, from the uh, tip to tail direction of the arrow. Then we essentially just join the dots uh, after we've moved the compass to get the um, uh, to get the resultant magnetic field and we tend to do that at various different distances through the wire. So what I'm going to say is that we're going to repeat at very varying distances from the wire or from the magnet. Okay, next one. Draw the shape of the field which will be found around this wire. So which way is the current going? The current is going down like so. And if the current is going down, we need to use the right hand rule. So remember the right hand rule says that if we grip the wire, then with the right hand, our thumb will be pointing in the direction of the current and our fingers will grip the wire and the curl of the fingers will give us the um, the direction of the magnetic field. So there's going to be two marks for this and one of them will be for just the shape of this and it's going to be circular with the field going this way. If you're not if you're not 100% sure on how to apply this rule, I've tried my best to do a little drawing here. So this here is the thumb and the fingers are curling this way around it, which is the direction of the um, of the field. So kind of like going this way and that's supposed to be circular as well. Okay, next one B, the behavior of the magnetic uh, compass is evidence that the core of the earth is magnetic. Explain why. Well, the magnetic arrow, the magnetic material will be pointing in the direction of north to south. So the north pole will be aligned, uh, will point towards the north and the south um, towards the south pole. So we can say that we, well, we can literally say that it points to the magnetic north slash south. That's just because the back of the arrow will be pointing towards the south, the, the front towards the north. And uh, it will also move. I mean, it will line up with the magnetic field of the earth. Okay guys, now if you're revising electromagnetism, you absolutely need to have a look at this video right over here in which I cover the whole of electromagnetism in just around 25 minutes. So 
click over here.